Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John J Gaming on for Mike here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Earlham Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA 14, featuring that college football revamp, of course. And today we get ourselves on back at home, man. We are taking on the Rose Holman Engineers in this episode. They are five and three, and you know they got themselves a solid team. They're five and three overall with a two and three conference record. Yo, know, grand same team that's you know part of a really you know difficult conference, at least diff difficult division in my opinion. They got a C plus overall squad with B minus offense and a C defense. Despite that, though, we Corso is going to be rocking with us. We are undefeated in conference play, and you know on top of that, you know we're trying to go ahead and try to get ourselves to a point where. You know, we control our own destiny at this point. If we win the rest of our games this season now, we will be going to a conference championship game for sure. As you know, we check out Rose Holman's schedule. You know, they may have lost three of their last four games, but last two games, man, they were competitive against both Hanover and Anderson. Both teams who are now ranked uh, in the top 25. And they played our third ranked team in a row. So a brutal schedule for Rose Holman, but... I mean, we can't show any pity from them, man. We just got to keep going up forward. We got to make sure we go ahead and take care of business. It's going to be a good one, man. So make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you do happen to be brand new. Let's go ahead and get some rivalry action going. Let's get it. So let's go ahead and get started with dispatching our rivals. We are feeling fantastic. We just got a huge win on the road last week. And Adam Hill might be getting us on a high note here as he does the secondary of Rose Holman. What a way to get into the end zone. That was impressive. 42-yard throw for Adam Hill to third. That gets us the first touchdown of the day from the get-go. As now, you know, we get it over to the Rose Holman offense, see what they can go ahead and do. As you know what they're trying to do? If they're trying to go ahead, you know, if they run... A quarterback draw on a third and long and our defense is simply too good to be fooled by that so we're about to go ahead and try to make them pay for it in a big way as Justin Burns gonna go ahead and get the kick returned here he's got some space to work with on the outside he does get forced out of bounds but a 29 yard kick return though yeah absolutely love to see it let's we'll see if we can turn that into some more points for us here as Miami will drop back He's looking around, good, trying to create some space. Makes one man miss. He's down the sideline himself. He gets himself out of bounds for a gain of 22 yards. And that's a, a really nice run by Miami Uagallier there. Just being able to go ahead and avoid the pressure in the first place. As we now got second and five now coming up. Miami dropping back, looking over in the middle. Finds Jeremy Sprinkle Jr., Thought that was going to count as a touchdown. I'm not going to lie, to be honest with you. But we can at least go ahead, you know, punch it in here. But not how we usually do it. Do it for a little play action in there. Get it to our main guy, Bob Smith. One of the few original walk-ons on the squad that is still a starter. Him and Caden Doman still starting for the squad. And Bob Smith getting my, what might be his first touchdown of the season, to be honest with you. And that's going to make it a 14-0 game. And... Right now, we're just crushing Rose Holman here at home, showing, you know, really living up to that 16th uh, ranking in the nation thus far, as, you know, we are actually find ourselves quite in the hunt, you know, to get ourselves an opportunity to go to a major bowl game when things are all said and done, but, I mean, still, even then, you know, we still got quite a few games left to play, so we gotta make sure we continue to take care of business as Miami... Throwing over the right hand side, gets it out to Derek Blue, who makes another big catch downfield, a gain of 26 yards. You absolutely love to see it. Has got another first and 10 coming up here. Gonna fake it with Miami Uagalle. He could potentially run it in the end zone if CJ Holman could have gotten that block. He had it too. But instead, third and goal coming up here a couple plays later, and CJ Holman. He'll simply go ahead and take care of the rest. An easy two-yard touchdown. And Earlham continues to extend the lead on Rose Holman. We're up 21 to nothing. We get another field goal that makes it 24 to nothing. 
As now we'll go ahead and now uh, skip over to the second half where it's just more dominance. This time, Mario Hernandez making some moves downfield. He gets it all the way down to the 35-yard line. And it's been a dominating game for our guys here. We come in 24 to nothing. We get the ball to start the second half. Mario Hernandez comes out and gives us a great kick return to start things off. As we got another first and 10, Miami throwing quickly over to Jakeem Short, who gets lit up like a Christmas tree, but does end up picking up 13 yards through the air. Is now second and eight now coming up here. Miami dropping back to pass. He's looking around. Uh, moving the pocket pretty well, actually. That's something that Miami has gotten better at, is having better pocket presence overall. And it's really showing on that drive. As we now have another first and ten coming up here. Miami going to take the hand up of the field. Going to go ahead. Get it into the end zone once again. Touchdown, Earlham. In a 31 to nothing ball game. Rose Holman just out here looking shell-shocked right about now as they try to throw to right-hand side. And that's how it's been for the engineers, man. They have not gotten anything going this entire day it has been an all Earlham performance so far so we're up 31 to nothing here as we'll go ahead now take the kick return from justin burden as now he's got some space down the sideline gets past one man he got potentially just one man left the beat but he gets him out of bounds though still another massive kick return though gain of 51 yards and so here we go, still up 31 to nothing here as CJ Homan taking another carry up the gut, another gain of 10 yards there. We're just uh, moving downfield with efficiency. But we could run to a little trouble here, to be honest with you. Third and 11. We do run a screen on the left hand side, and Jakeem Short does get there. A gain of 13 yards for the young receiver. As now we got second and goal now coming up after that great catch by Jakeem Short. It's Jesse Green who gets it into the end zone and it was big. Just destroying these guys. And that's how this game is going to end. No surprises here. We get a huge win as look at this play of the game. You know, this was not a uh, big throw by Miami Uigalier, but that was all Adam Hill the third. Get himself downfield and making a huge catch in the process. That was really a tone center for us here as well. As, you know, we end up winning this rivalry game in the biggest way possible. And we are going to go ahead, you know, win this one by a really impressive final score. And that's what I love to see. But look what ends up happening when we try to exit. The game freezes. Hopefully I can get around this, but no promises here, man. So, because our game freezes on us, the game did not save. So, don't get it twisted. You saw what we did to Rose Holman. We beat their ass. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and simulate this game just because I'm not trying to play this whole game again. And hopefully, we don't end up getting screwed over. And thankfully, we don't again. We don't win as much as... You know, we should have, but we still get a nice win. We win 48 to 27 here at home, and we'll still be able to improve our record up to 8 and 1. Now, don't don't worry, guys, since, you know, we beat Rose Holman by so much, you know, in, in that first game when we actually played. We're going to make this a double header. We're going to also play our other rival in Franklin. See if we can go 2 and 0 in this episode, man. So let's go ahead and get this double header officially underway. And by the way, if you haven't done so already, I highly encourage you smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you happen to be new. As you can see, more plays like that were Cameron Frost, the free safety coming up and making a really nice play on the ball, intercepting Jamal Sanders. As this is turning into a little bit of a you know little close game, to be honest with you. We're only up 6 to nothing. They're not as good as what we experienced against Rose Holman. But, you know, Franklin, they're putting up a good fight. We moved up to number 15 in the nation, by the way, as well. That's another thing that happened. Slowly but surely, climbing up the pools. 
But can we punch it into the end zone? No, that's a $100 question. As we got third and two coming up, Miami. Going to throw it to the left hand side and not the best decision in the world. Wonder if we'll actually go for it here or not. And we will actually do so. Fourth and two coming up here. Let's see if we can punch it in as Miami dropping back. Throwing over the middle. Finds Adam Hildeford in the end zone. Touchdown, Earlham. Let's go, baby. And that's what you absolutely love to see. Fourth down, being aggressive and going for it. Because as you can see, you know, we're uh, we're kind of moving the ball downfield pretty well. But at the same time, though, we're really having struggles finishing drives. Because we're up 16 to nothing, but it's been a ton of field goals to get to this point. I mean, been four trips to the red zone, three of them ending up in field goals. Yeah, absolutely hate to see it as Franklin is actually starting to put together a little bit of a drive here. As Adam Garrett picks up a few yards. But we do get him to a third and long though, thankfully. As now, we'll see if we can go ahead and make sure we take care of business. As Sanders throws over the middle and gets it out to Roger Moore. And that leads to fourth and seven coming up here. Where Frank was going to try to go for a field goal themselves. Let's see if they can actually hit it or not. They, uh, they've kind of struggled uh, on the football field so far today. Again, they've been a scrappy team, but... They're not really matching up our talent, though. And right now, we still are going to go ahead and pitch this shutout, though. As we force them to miss another field goal. As now we cut back into the third quarter. Fortunately, capture card messed up a little bit, so we did miss a touchdown. But Miami still up 25 to nothing. Gets it a huge throw downfield to Adam Hill the third. Just chucked it down there you absolutely love to see it the arm strength really showing on that play as we got second and eight now coming up a couple plays after as miami throws over the middle gets it to jeremy sprinkle jr who gets it into the end zone touchdown earlham another big play for this offense and just we're just steamrolling over opponents i think it might be close to time for us when this season is all said and done, we need to go ahead and go to a new conference because right now, you know, for some of these teams that we're going up against, you know, we've had our close calls. Sure, that has happened, but only year number four. You remember the St. Thomas series? That was more of a grind. Here, we are just absolutely crushing people at this point. And this is only our fourth season of FBS football. Or not even all of our original walk-ons are off the roster yet. That's the crazy thing. We still got OG walk-ons ready to go as we get another player to game. You'll love to see it. As we will go ahead and win this game by a final score of 35 to 7. It may have been rivalry week, you know, playing against both of our rivalry opponents, but that being said, though, this was just way too easy for us here. Beating both of our rivals convincingly. And now if it doesn't freeze, we'll go check out the stats for our guys, man. So another dominant game for the guys here once again. As it was just, it's been our it's been our season, it seems like. I told you in a bigger old podcast that this is our year. And we're showing it right now, man. Shoot, the defense got an interception in the fourth quarter. You know, when we had our backups in. That was the only time they actually scored or... Even consistently move the football on us, you know, doing stuff like that. So, a very good showing for us here, for sure. And I am proud of how this team is looking. Checking out the player stats. So, we are, you know, Miami Uagawe playing the majority of the game. And what I really like about this kid, he has really improved as a passer. May not be the flashiest stuff. 289 yards, 2 touchdowns, 56% completion percentage. But... He's not risking it downfield as much as he used to. You know, he's making more smarter decisions, and that's helping us out on the scoreboard. CJ Patton also came in and got some, you know, a little bit of garbage time. You know, a little bit of experience under the belt. Three for six, 26 yards. For the ground game, we didn't really run the ball as much as we usually do. So even though we were up by quite a bit, you know, we went with a more pass-happy approach. Uh, CJ Holman did lead the day though, 11 carries for 42 yards, but nobody got into the end zone. Receivers though, you know, Adam Hill the third went off today. He had six catches for 106 yards and a tub. 
Jeremy Sprinkle Jr., our true freshman tight end, he also found the end zone. Free catches for 50 yards. Um, and then after that, you know, Jer Jakeem Short, he had a solid day as well. Four catches for 66 yards. And that, you know, actually led us to a, a last second field goal to end the first half as well. So I really like to see that. Nate Coleman and John Bird each had three pancakes to their name. Brian Smith had a pancake and a sack. And then Zacoby uh, Johnson, who came in the fourth quarter, I believe, he actually only allowed a sack. Defensively, it was a really good day for the guys overall, as Josh Brown led the way with seven total tackles on the day and also tacked on a TFL in the process. Caden Doman wasn't too far behind. He had six tackles of TFL and even got himself an interception in the fourth quarter when he came in as the uh, backup free safety. You know, he comes in and plays that, like, uh, extra linebacker, quote-unquote, you know, extra defensive back kind of thing. And that's been really working well for us overall. We didn't get any sacks on the quarterback, but they also couldn't really move the ball downfield as Cameron Frost did also get an interception as well. He ended up with four tackles and a TFL. That being said, even though we didn't get any sacks on this quarterback, we did have plenty of uh, opportunities to get uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Finn Otis, man, four tackles, three TFLs, and Ryan Sands, the best defensive line combo, I think, you know, in terms of edge rushers in our conference. He had, Matthew Sands also with five tackles and three TFLs. Josh Brown had a TFL. Chris Ty also had a TFL as well. You know, a lot of young guys, you know, coming in and making a difference, you know, as well as your older guys that have really matured as starters. We do, however, find out that Jason Bradley is not going to join the Urham Quakers. He did decide where he wanted to play his collegiate football at, and it's going to be at Louisiana Tech. And that's actually the last person that was on our recruiting board. So that being said, that does mean that we'll be able to expand our recruiting board a little bit and I will show those all those new prospects in a bigger recruiting special at the end of the season when we have our Big Girl Football podcast as well as find out if we make it to a conference championship, you know, find out bowl games, that kind of stuff. But that being said, you know, next episode, we just got to keep on rolling, man. We're number 12 in the entire country. We got to go ahead and take on the Hanover College Panthers who are currently 6-4. You know, coming into the season, I thought this was going to be the most difficult part of our schedule. Uh, Hanover fell off quite a bit. This is the first time, I think, that we're going to face them that they aren't ranked. And, you know, we just got to make sure we take care of business. You know, we don't need to win out to win this conference anymore, or at least win our division. We just got to make sure we beat Anderson at the end of the day. So, it's going to be a really exciting last couple of games, and if you're excited for it, do me a favor and please smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you're new as we're approaching the end of, I believe, season number four, man. This is John Jay Gaming on the mic signing off, but hopefully you're all out here having a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.